I guess I have to stand up for this. <laughs> Um, just a brief introduction to the chair, which is launched um, in the fair um, this year. It's called 360 uh, because it turns around 360 degrees, and you can sit on it in any way, uh, 360 degrees. It's a chair, but somehow it isn't. It's something to sit on um, and to something to sit on for work, not necessarily the office, because I think we work in many other places than the office. Um, it could be in the kitchen, it could be people working in a shop, it could be um, a hairdresser. Um, basically work in terms of an activity and the activity means that when you sit, you don't necessarily have to sit still and not sit for a long time and uh, more importantly you want to sit dynamically, you want to do something. So um, for me it's... it's <laughs> I've had this for about half a year in my office, so I feel very natural to, s to just jump on it and sit on it and turn around and, um, and basically feel free to do what I would be doing at that moment. There are two versions, a stool and a chair. The, stu the chair came first. The stool was a kind of uh, a wish from the manufacturer. Um, it has wheels and it's height adjustable, that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gricic. And Mr. Olivares, do you want to state your case? So my case against the 360 chair and stool um, comes from, from a perspective of, of, of its life in, in the office. Uh, I'm not criticizing its role in-house. I'm not criticizing its role in a barber shop um, or in the kitchen, I'm criticizing its role as a as a product intended for an office market, and there, I accuse the chair of of perhaps being a, a formally driven product for a, a, a small design sensitive market, uh, not a product for, let's say. Uh, a contract market of, of a large uh, based office culture. So do I can I continue with the argument? Uh, yeah, okay. Do do we have my images? <laughs> so the the first reference I'll show is the the Capisco chair by Peter Opsvik in 1984 and the archetype um, you see it offers the same postures as 360 and even more. The chair was developed around ergonomic uh, philosophies of the time and, and it, it, it's a real product. Uh, in my office is in Boston, there uh, down the street in an MIT building, there's four floors filled with these chairs. So it's a, it's a heavy, it's a product intended for a heavy heavy contract use and it's been on the market now for 20 years. Uh, the next image, please. Uh, here is George Nelson's Perch, uh, 1964 Action Office. It's also a similar archetype to what we have in 360, but I'd like to point to the, to the use of materials and the intended context. I'd also like to state that the, the first version of the, the Perch did not have the circular uh, ring which 360 has because it was purely intended for standing. It was never intended to be used as a, as a seat because when you put your feet up on that circle, you basically ha achieve the same posture as you would in a normal chair. So the perch was actually for standing and then I think Herman Miller developed it farther away from that. The second thing I'd like to call attention to is, is the materials. The, the perch, um, the bridge is produced in a hop sack material, which is very, very soft, and it allows you to slide back and forth on it, and it doesn't catch on clothing. Where 360 is produced in a molded polyurethane foam that, that it, it's quite s sticky. Um, the second argument, I mean, the, the, to further this argument against w why 360, I think, would, would fail in a heavy office contract world, is its materials. Um, the polyurethane uh, over molded onto steel, if I'm not mistaken, is, um, is impossible to, to recycle. Uh, you, can't, you can't take it apart. 
Um, I, later, I have some questions about, about how Magis addresses this. Um, and finally, and, and uh, yeah, I guess actually that's, that would end my argument, and then uh, we ask questions later. So please, uh, Mrs. Antonelli, your defense. Thank you. Your Honor and members of the jury, good afternoon. Do we need another chair in the world? And especially, do we need another office chair? The answer is no, unless, unless it can provide a new ingredient in our life, unless it can be disturbing enough to force us to change our usual habits and sit better, work better, and try to live better. As a person with back problems who had an operation, I've been taught that the number one rule for trying to preserve your back in the office is to not stay seated for more than 20 minutes. It's to change your position as often as you can. It's to be uncomfortable in order to be comfortable. And it's about being displaced. The 360 chair definitely is about that. It's disruptive. It's kind of irritating. It's not pretty. It's a chair that makes you question what it's doing there in the office and in your life. For this reason, I think that the 360 is a good innovation, is an addition that still needs to be tested. The truth is, everything needs to be tested. Everything needs to be incorporated and have a trial in real life. And you know, Peter Opsvig's chair, which is definitely fantastic, in reality, does not get used in all those varied positions because it looks too much like a normal chair. Everybody that I know uses that great chair pretty much in the same position. Why? Because it looks too much like a chair. 